And now, a few moments with Dave Shugarts, author of Secrets of the Widow's Son, and contributor to the upcoming book, Secrets of the Lost Symbol. Hi, I'm Dave Shugarts, author of Secrets of the Widow's Son, and contributor to the upcoming book, Secrets of the Lost Symbol. This is hunch number three as we come down to the release date on September the 15th of Dan Brown's new novel, The Lost Symbol. Uh, today is uh, September the 7th. 2009. As always, this is just a hunch, a guess, not a prediction, and it's based on my own research as well as clues that have been spread around by Dan Brown's publishers. This one is about labyrinths. Let's be sure to distinguish that a labyrinth is not a maze because in a maze you have a choice of paths and part of the fun is to confuse you. In a labyrinth there's only one path. I spent quite a while researching my book and observing all kinds of symbols from all cultures and periods of history. The world of symbols is vast, of course. The labyrinth kept popping up as a symbol, and yet I noticed that Dan Brown doesn't really mention the labyrinth in any of his previous books, and I know of no clue in recent weeks from the lost symbol publishers having to do with labyrinths, so this is a real long shot, perhaps. I find the labyrinth in intriguing because it's an extremely old design dating back perhaps 3,500 years or more, so that it had uh, pagan ori origins. It was found on ancient coins from the island of Crete, for instance, and yet it became a very Christian symbol as well, adopted by the Catholic Church and later by other Christian churches. This symbol was developed by cultures all over the world, too, so there are Mayan and Celtic labyrinths, for in instance. Lately, there is a kind of a New Age treatment of the labyrinth. In most cases, the idea of walking the labyrinth is to take a spiritual journey to some condition of enlightenment. In some of the great cathedrals, it was also a substitute for going to the Holy Land and walking the way of the cross if you couldn't afford that kind of pilgrimage. You're free to design one any way you wish, of course, but there are two general types of labyrinths that are considered the most common. The older design is the Seventh Circuit, Circuit Cretan Labyrinth, and the newer one is the Eleventh Circuit uh, Chart Labyrinth, the archetype of which is at Chartres Cathedral in, Paris, in uh, France. Although, it, although newer, it's not exactly young since it was completed in 1201 A.D. Dan Brown's books like to focus on things that start out as pagan and then are adopted into religions, so I had developed a hunch, or perhaps it's a form of wishful thinking, of course, that perhaps Dan Brown would want to include a, la a labyrinth in the lost symbol. Well, recently I just posed the, qu the question to myself, are there, are there labyrinths in Washington, D.C.? And the answer is yes, uh, since there are labyrinths practically every, uh, everywhere in the world. A lot of them are associated with cathedrals and churches. As with so many things these days, there are plenty of websites where you can go and discover labyrinth locations and lots of labyrinth lore. But when I looked at the list, I found one labyrinth in Washington that really seemed made to order for the lost symbol. It's the one found at the Georgetown Waterfront Park on the banks of the Potomac. It was completed last year, and it's a cheerful, pleasing design, and there's an interesting design of a park bench there, and it contains a little shelf under the seat with a diary where visitors can write their impressions. But here are some more things to know about it. If you look up river just a bit, you are looking at the bridge across the Potomac known as the Key Bridge, named after Francis Scott Key, who was a Freemason. If you look straight along the central axis of the labyrinth, you are looking directly at an island in the Potomac. In earlier times, this island was known as Mason's Island, but it is now known as Roosevelt Island in, in honor of Theodore Roosevelt, who was a Freemason. A marvelous statue of Teddy occupies the charming witted glade there, and as you look slightly to the right of the uh, island in this uh, photo, on looking at the opposite shore of the Potomac, you're looking at a kind of a suburb of corporate buildings known as Roslyn. Now, all these uh, echo from uh, Dan Brown's books and also the fact that for um, uh, the space of almost two years, the, the actual title of the lost symbol was going to be the Solomon Key, so Key Bridge and uh, some of these other keys. So I just have this hunch that this labyrinth might figure in the lost symbol or at least in the treasure hunt leading up to the release date. 
And that is yet another one of my hunches. I hope you have enjoyed this talk, and please check back for more hunches coming soon. Thank you. Check back regularly for updates from Dave Shugarts as we approach the release date of Dan Brown's new novel, The Lost Symbol. And look for Secrets of the Lost Symbol coming soon from HarperCollins.